So I know I have uh, very limited time here today, uh, but before I start, um, I want to recognize that even though I'm up here on this stage alone, uh, this is not just my story. There were four other writers, um, Dustin Zhao, who's uh, sitting here in the audience today, my older brother Will Watson, um, Connor Myers, Andrew Childress. Um, together we wrote this story. So even though I'm telling it by myself today, uh, it took all of us to make it happen. And more than that, uh, we had hundreds of people across the country who um, took us in, who fed us, who uh, gave us a place to stay, um, who gave us food. Um, and without those people, this wouldn't be possible. So before I start, I just want to acknowledge that and uh, thank them. So last summer, I biked 3,600 miles across the country for falling whistles. Um, together with four of my best friends, uh, we biked from um, Wilmington, North Carolina to Los Angeles, California. We started with our back tires in the Atlantic and finished with our front tires in the Pacific. We biked through 12 states, 50 cities, um, and along the way, we told the story that you guys just saw, the story of falling whistles and the story of the whistleblowers. But our, our story doesn't really start that day on the beach in Wilmington. Uh, it actually begins about seven months before that, during my freshman year at Duke. Um, as many of you are no doubt aware, students at Duke are often expected to do great things with their summers, um, either through internships or summer jobs, or as you can gauge, there's a lot of pressure to um, do something worthwhile, to do something meaningful with your summer. Um, and it's pretty hard to make a decision. It's pretty hard to choose something from all those options. Um, so when I was making that decision, I was having a tough time because I was really looking for a way to give back. I felt like a lot of my experiences in college uh, had been about me, had been about what I could get out of it, um, how I could make my resume look better, how I could get into college. So I was really looking for something different. Um, but what I found was that as a 19-year-old <laughs> with no real skills, um, there was very little I could do. And so it took me a long time to sort of navigate my way uh, to what eventually became the bike tour. Um, while I was flying home for Thanksgiving back from Duke, I, uh, I was reading this book about a guy who'd biked across the country. And I remember looking out the window and thinking, like, I could do that. <laughs> um, and that, that sort of came from the, uh, a question I asked myself. Um, what can I do with who I am right now? This is sort of like a back to the drawing board moment. With the skills and abilities that I have right now, how can I make a difference? How can I serve? Um, how can I help the most people? And the answer for me was the bike tour, the asset that I felt I had um, in the greatest supply, the biggest asset I felt I had uh, was my voice. Um, and using the vehicle of the bike tour, I could spread the message of falling whistles to hundreds of people across the country in a way that um, wasn't possible without the bike tour. Um, you have to understand, <laughs> I'm not a cyclist. Um, prior to the bike tour, only one of the five of us had any substantial cycling experience. Uh, four of us didn't even own a bike until uh, about a month before the bike tour. <laughs> it had been so long. Uh, it had been so long since I had uh, learned to bike that I had forgotten how to use the gears on a bike. <laughs> um, so the odds were pretty heavily stacked against us. Um, Along with our inexperience with cycling, uh, we had very little experience with planning or carrying out a cross-country speaking tour, which in many ways is every bit as stressful um, mentally and physically as uh, the actual bike ride. Um, so in mid-April, uh, we were really struggling to get the bike tour off the ground. Um, we were at different schools across the country. Um, and so we were on this email chain sort of trying to connect and get things going. And we were sharing our hopes and dreams and how we hoped the bike tour would go, uh, what we wanted to get out of it. Um, and so I sent an email uh, around that time, about two months before we started, um, sharing my dream. Um, I had pictured pretty vividly uh, the moment that was most important to me about the tour, the last few minutes before we reached the coast. Um, so I'm going to read that email now because it really played a big role in carrying me through the months of work it took to make the bike tour happen and some of the hardest moments of the trip. The sun's setting as we ride out onto the beach. Falling Whistles HQ and maybe some of our parents and friends are there, 
ready to celebrate with us. When we hit the beach, we either ditch our bikes and run into the ocean or just ride straight into the water. I haven't decided yet. We're all going nuts as the totality of the trip, the immensity of what we've just done hits us. We'll be screaming and laughing as we tackle each other into the ocean and hug our friends and family. Depending on how sore my butt is, I might just pick my bike up and sling it into the water. I don't, I don't think I'll care if it rusts. Maybe I'll just start swimming towards the sun. And the whole time, the Falling Whistles crew and whoever's there on the beach will be taking pictures and laughing and celebrating with us. But then maybe we'll break down when we think about how hard it was to climb the Rockies, how deeply we had to search for the strength to get back on our bikes every day those first two weeks, how much it hurt when we fell off our bikes and didn't want to get back up, how mad we were when someone didn't cook dinner or help set up the tent, how beautiful the stars were in the desert and how peaceful it was in the middle of nowhere, what it was like to be away from the constant grind of technology and modern haste that so wears on me here at Duke. We'll think about all the people we talked to, all the whistles we sold, all the people we met and who helped us. We'll remember what it felt like a month and a half ago to fall asleep listening to the Atlantic Ocean, knowing we wake up the next day and ride all that day and the day after that and the day after that. We'll remember again how beautiful the trees in North Carolina and Tennessee were. We'll see again the endless fields in Kansas, the beauty of the mountains in Colorado. And we'll look at each other and think about how close we've grown over the past month and a half how proud we are of each other for finishing the trip. You guys are already like family to me, but I don't think you can put into words what it'll be like after sharing an experience like this. And when I look at all the pictures of us on the beach, that's what I want to see. I want to remember all of this all at once. That's what I want to remember. It's a long, long way between there and here, but I think that's what being a whistleblower is about, seeing the endless stretch of hills and plains and mountains and deserts between where the world is and where it could be, and having the strength to imagine a world changed, where Congo is free from the brutality and horror of endless war, where children no longer carry guns, where rape as a weapon of war is a distant memory. And with that imagination comes the resolve to put both feet on the pedals, even when it seems like the mountains aren't coming any closer, when the wind is blowing harder than ever, when the temperature in the desert hits 115 degrees. Because in a few weeks we will reach the mountains that once seemed so far off, and a few weeks after that, we will find ourselves staring at the ocean, utterly blown away by the realization of what once seemed impossible. <laughs> I'd be lying if I told you that when I wrote that email in mid-April, I knew with 100% certainty that I would ever see that dream fulfilled, that I would ever uh, be on that beach. Um, we had our doubts. Um, we were worried that we wouldn't get the tour off the ground, that we wouldn't find the money and the resources to uh, make the tour happen. Um, we were worried about safety, frankly. Um, if you've ever thought a semi you know, whizzed past you on the highway, imagine what it's like to feel the wind of a semi rushing past you at 70 miles an hour on an interstate. Um, and frankly, we worried that we would fail, um, that we just wouldn't have what it takes to do a cross-country bike tour. Um, but for all of us, the, the power of our dream um, was greater than the fear of, our fa than the fear of failure. Um, for all of us, um, we managed to overcome. Um, and four months after I wrote that email, I found myself sprinting across Venice Beach uh, with my bike on my shoulder, uh, racing, the other, racing the other riders to the, to the ocean. Um, along the way, we had reached uh, hundreds with our, with our message, um, and thousands more had been reached through media and internet exposure. But our story hasn't ended there. Um, today I stand in an auditorium filled with some of the world's most brilliant and innovative peop people. Um, <laughs> the people in this auditorium have far greater abilities to create change than I did when I started this bike tour. Um, the potential in this auditorium far outshines uh, any effect that we may have had. So my challenge to you today is this, to ask yourself the question that started us on the road to the bike tour. What can you do with who you are right now? Um, with the skills and abilities that you have right now, how can you um, best, serve, best serve all of us? What can you do? Um, because I think that problems like the war in Congo are so, so big, so intractable, that a lot of us would just say, it's never going to change. There's nothing we can do. Um, but I would say that it's, it's possible, but it's going to take all of us. Um, so if you found any inspiration here at TED, um, take that inspiration and go do.
create something, create a dream that will propel you to do something that you thought wasn't possible. Um, because that's the only that way that we can address problems like the war in Congo. Thank you.